GIS is an information system. Uh, geographic is earth information, means uh, data and information knowledge. I have explained that um, uh, in earlier lectures that how data gets converted into information. But knowledge and wisdom, these two different domains, quadrants are not yet been covered that we have to take uh, uh, apply our own mind. Here data is being converted to information, geographic information and system means it is connected to various domains, uh, capturing to processing uh, to uh, publishing. So many things are involved and they are interconnected. Unless until we connect the dots, we do not get the, the required shape in the uh, uh, ge uh, in the geometry. So that is what here we are doing that uh, we are uh, converting geographic information in uh, inputting and uh, getting certain outputs that uh, you can understand geographic information system. That information system used to input, store, retrieve, manipulate, analyze, mm -hmm. output, geographically reference data or geospatial data. There are many things. If you understand this, this uh, 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 the definition or you can say the part of the definition that what the GIS is. So in this geographic information system, this geographic information system, uh, what we do, we input what data, we store what data what we retrieve data, what we manipulate data, what we analyze data, and what is output, the process data. And this is full uh, uh, game about the data. We are doing uh, inputting, storing, retrieving, manipulating, analyzing, and taking output. This is everything we are doing about data. So this is basically a data science. In civil engineering, there are huge amount of data which we need to process to understand our uh, different civil engineering structures and uh, the planning and the execution of civil engineering projects, um, be it a transportation project or a water resources project or maybe an environmental project. Uh, the second part here, here, after the output you look at, this is output process data, and this data is a geographically referenced data. This is what we are dealing here with. All the process we are doing here, inputting, storing, retrieving, manipulating, then we are doing all the data in georeference. Uh, this is a big thing in GIS that you need to understand what is the geographically referenced data. Simple data when we take in surveying, like we calculate reduced levels in college campus, then of any point, say reduced level is 102. In that case, that 102 is a standalone data, not a georeferenced data. If you say this is the the location of that point whose reduced level are 102 is x coordinate and this and y coordinate and y coordinate is this on our campus map, then these are local coordinates. You call them Cartesian coordinates or map coordinates. They are simple coordinates. But a person sitting in Bombay or for that purpose, you can say in Sydney, they cannot make it out where the exact location of that point is. So what we need, we need a global system. We need a global system. So geographically reference data, uh, geographically reference data means data, the point at which you have taken reduced level of 102, you reference it to Earth. And to reference it to Earth means that we always go for latitude, longitude and third dimension is altitude. So latitude and longitude, they, they represents uh, y and x coordinate. Your, uh, when you see the globe, then globe is divided in graticules. 
the on the equator if we move uh, from the midpoint then you are taking you are changing your longitude and if you go towards the polar region then your uh, latitude is changing and if you are on to the earth surface your latitude is different and if you go in the space then the the third dimension z dimension is changing so all three if we measure about or or if we are measuring all, only x comma y in terms of longitude comma latitude not the altitude so altitude is above the earth and rest of the two the other two are your x and y coordinate x coordinate is longitude y coordinate is, is latitude and these are very much uh, uh, standard they are like uh, in physics we say that kilogram is a standard unit of uh, mass and length the meter or centi millimeter or these are the standard unit of the uh, linear measurement uh, similarly this graticule represents that uh, how we can locate a point geographically exactly wherever you go whether you are in india or you are in say australia or you are say in america but point which has been measured with reference to standard uh, system of ram refer referencing then that point represents uh, longitude latitude and if you are measuring the third dimension altitude that represents z, z in local cartesian co coordinate so here in gis when we work upon data then every data is geographically referenced every data is referenced to earth so this is very really interesting thing that when we do work here sitting at ahmedabad and when we send our data file to a person working in america then there won't be any change in the location or he need not to worry about the location of that point and exactly what we are doing they can do deal with the data so what is here that we are doing the geo referenced data inputting so while inputting we reference it with the how to do geo referencing that is a big task will understand it at a later stage but presently we understand that in gis system whatever data data is very important whatever data we do we use uh, geo referenced data so simple data is of no use in gis until unless we know the longitude and latitude of a point of a city of a country then it is difficult so your task is to understand first in geographic information system the graticule system that earth is a globe and this globe is how unfolded in terms of a map in terms of graticule how the uh, parallels are there and how the the uh, the different lines are drawn and what is the degree minutes and second and how they are represented how the maps are created in geographical reference data so while doing this we need to understand all this so we'll take up one sheet uh, the survey of india and we'll understand that why maps are really marked with the, the degrees and minutes and seconds and with that data if we enter here and then the data becomes geo referenced in gis so that is one way second way is that while capturing the data we can we capture also the longitude and latitude and maybe altitude also so those data are the uh, that is the importance here why this is important we will get the feel that why the data should be geo referenced can't we handle the data uh, locally like uh, say local file you you might have created for generating the contour uh, maps in the uh, fourth semester so th that is another thing that when we are working then that map is not much useful for the other purposes for the persons who are doing analysis at some other location and it would be difficult for them to really understand the meaning of that data so uh, this uh, geographic information system what it is that we input the data or sometimes data is captured 
store the data, retrieve back the data. Sometimes we manipulate the data, then analyze the data. And these, these functions are available. Each and every function is available in GIS application. And finally, what we take is the output. Again, we are taking output in terms of data, data files. This is very interesting that what we are inputting is raw data here sometimes it may not be processed fully. Sometimes we need, say, integration of data. So this data, uh, input data is in bits, pieces, piece and bits and pieces. And what we do, we integrate this data and output would be an integrated map of whole, say, Gujarat. Earlier we had map of, say, every district of Gujarat and we have input into the GIS every district of the Gujarat. Then we did all these kind of uh, processing in the GIS application or software and we take output as a map of the Gujarat. So in this case, we are doing integration. Integration and output is also a, a, a kind of data, but here we are interested, more interested that at every level, the data is geographically referenced. Why I am so emphasizing, why learning the geographic information system or say and geoinformatics, uh, this term geographical, uh, geographically referenced data or geographically uh, geographical referencing of the data is uh, uh, come over and again at each and every step of working with or within the environment of GIS. So this is how we uh, deal with. So here it is written as data. But or after the or is written what? Geospatial data. So there are two types of data here you could uh, um, think of that uh, geospatial. What is geospatial? Say so data is simple data. I said that the point elevation of 102 in our campus is a standalone data. There is no variation in the space of the data. But while you are doing the drawing of contours on a sheet of uh, paper, then what you are doing, you are creating a map. Uh, of the whole say campus or more than campus area you might have gone to ambaji to create uh, the contour levels in that say there are uh, five uh, square kilometer of the area and you have generated the uh, contour map so that is a there is a kind of variation uh, from one point to other of the reduced level here it is say 102 at uh, set 10 after 10 meter that is 103 after more 10 meter 105 and so on. So there is variation of reduced level. So that is in uh, the data is varying in the space. So what is this? Geospatial data can also be entered into this system. So whole things can be repeated for data, uh, numerical data or standalone data, and whole thing can be done here with the geospatial data. Say input, store, retrieve, manipulate, analyze, and output. So geospatial data is mostly shape files like maps. They are not one. We can convert this uh, geospatial data into also the tabular formats, but the inputting can also be done in terms of map. And both data, these data, the singular data or tabular singular data and the geo variable uh, space variable data can also be uh, done with the GIS system. So major thing is that we are handling in geographic information system data. That is why I say this geographic information system or geoinformatics is a data driven application. This is a data science in one way. Uh, when we handle, say, manipulate the data, when we analyze the data, the, uh, could you see my arrow here? Right, yes, in the chat box, if I'm with you. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, 
uh, could yes, you sir. listen what i say yes sir everybody is comfortable ha, ha, na okay okay ha, ha, okay. okay okay fine uh, so the, this is a geo in, a geographic information system slide number 2 is on the screen presently yes sir R- right okay <clears throat> yes sir yes sir so i i've been explaining this data geographical data uh, so uh, this geographic and information system now the third level of uh, geographic and information system is that in order to support decision making these are with regard to output this output how this output is useful that this output would be useful in order to support decision making for planning and management of land use natural resources environment transportation urban facilities and other administrative records very interesting to see here i should not i want change slide uh, very quickly because this need a deep understanding in the beginning that what we are really learning through this semester this is a really ultimate subject to learn it's a very advanced subject to learn in civil engineering it's a like a you would be very happy to uh, have gone through this after 10 years of time period that you understood at least you took up the uh, geoinformatics subject uh, uh, as elective so interesting thing here look at in order to support decision making many a times what happens we uh, assume or we behave like uh, we are just uh, becoming engineer site engineer or we are going to do one building or two building but that is not the thing you are going to become say not only the assistant engineer in say in 10 years of span you would be reaching to executive engineers role or if you are working in private then managerial role somewhere if you are doing say masters program after this then also you would be handling so much of data and this geographic information system Uh, in management and masters program in engineering and technology so in those all things we use this information system and decision making so this is a next level program if it un- uh, presently uh, if you understand this at undergraduate level you would be ha- you would be having the depth of the uh, subject uh, before going to pg programs uh, so uh, it's a really being taught in the other say computer and it engineering and other uh, engineering uh, and technological courses but yet they are also uh, at learning stage at the introductory levels uh, to civil engineering we should uh, go through this uh, so in order to support decision making for planning and management of land use say world first land use Uh, here i might have explained you last time so if you were present you understand what the land use is then the natural resources like water like environment like soil around us and so those resources which we deal in civil engineering on day to day basis we need that uh, how they are being processed in the or could be processed in the gis Uh, environment this environment subject is also useful in uh, understanding here the work of gis transportation urban facilities mm, like uh, the bus stands then the routes uh, for the transportation then the location of different civic centers then movement of uh, various uh, public facilities and people around these facilities and while designing we also many a times need the administrative record to analyze and taking the decision is uh, now slide been changed i'm on the third slide yes sir no sir. No. Okay. no sir do okay yes sir now three third slide uh, now is visible yes sir okay so uh, uh, let's have a look about the gis how it works how this system is so this is very uh, very common diagram generally 
uh, all of you, uh, when you write GIS in G, uh, this uh, Google, uh, you will find this kind of uh, diagrams uh, uh, that uh, flow of uh, different components of uh, the uh, components of the GIS that what they, there are. So very simple thing is that here, if you think that in these people that students are here somewhere in this green sphere, they capture the data like you have gone for. Here's what I found. Uh, that uh, data, uh, this data uh, you capture while doing surveying, say in four semester you turn for uh, contour. So the data you go and capture then uh, you bring and put that into software. So this part is missing in our our courses. This has been introduced in advanced countries. The courses which are say accredited by the national and international organizations, they they are the even the user level courses are being taught with the help of softwares and uh, like uh, with the computer education or computational techniques. So what we were doing that we were skipping this part here that uh, after collecting uh, the students and professors working or say in the industry, say some industries working, they are capturing the manpower is capturing and they deal directly that take the data into software. But what we do in the various things, we do not really bother about taking this into the software, but but in present days, it is very difficult that we do everything manually. Not at all if good. And if we say that we are not comfortable, then this is that you are outdated. This should have been introduced in the education system 10 years back. But uh, since uh, it could not be done uh, at that level or could not be achieved up to that level, so let us try that we should not be left out of this uh, uh, digital technology processing of uh, the information and processing of the knowledge. So people, they deal the, with the data. They deal with data or they capture the data or they bring the data in here. Then they input into the software. Software are uploaded onto the hardware like computer or laptop or say palm top or say your tablet. OK. Then they apply the method. Apply the method means methods means the process here. So they are these methods are inbuilt onto the uh, these uh, softwares. These methods are inbuilt onto the software. But unless until we understand the method, these use of software is like a black box. What goes in and what comes out, we do not understand the link between the two. Are you getting this? That uh, using software like a straight pro when you give in uh, when you input the loads what comes out is the design but when you don't understand that how that those loads are being analyzed in terms of uh, the diagram bending moment diagram or shear force diagram if you do not understand the method then without method what you get is the design that is uh, meaningless and if you adopt that as correct method or correct output from the software, then it's of no use. So what we understand, what we really learn is the methods in engineering and then the use of this digital technology. So presently what we are uh, what we are struggling here that we are understanding we are very good at methods. We, are, we, we learn 40 subjects you go through and you score 70 percent marks. Most of you are having like uh, seven CCP, uh, uh, CPI or more than that. Uh, so, uh, but when we say the dealing with software and hardware, this part uh, we are really struggling with. So my the humble request to all students, not only the AGC, that we sh if we skip these two here, then what we we are doing that we are we are capturing handling the data knowledge and then applying the methods and bringing back here so what we are doing we are using only pen pencil and paper and we are dealing with three domains only these two domains we are really um, out of the cycle 
but in most of the advanced countries they are very good at handling this software they understand the software they understand the hardware and then they also understand that how these methods are really playing well in the hardware and software and what are the output what happens this is technology this is not directly civil engineering civil engineering is here in the methods and this is technology if we combine this method with the technology this is the civil engineering technology this is digital technology and we can't really escape from the um, the combination of these two or say th this is say really at a lesser speed the civil engineering technology if you do not combine with the digital technology then the speed is not there in one of my lecture i was explain, uh, explaining to you that what the technology is technology means the the process or method which reduces your uh, working efforts so this software and hardware digital technology it reduces our working method or our uh, the hard work we put into so if we learn this for a say 6 months or 3 months the software and hard work if we put our in, if we generate interest in working onto the software and hardware this is a requirement it's like only one subject this is like one subject, but the thing is that since the uh, earlier student has not done, since some of the professors are not good at, or they are also not having that much interest in working in the digital technology. So generally we skip here, from here to here and go back here. Most of the subjects should be treated in this manner only, say in environment or say transportation, mostly is being handled in three domains only. These last two domains, they are not getting connected. They talk about, we talk about, but uh, but we are not implementing. We really not executing, not understanding it just for the sake of that they are there only that much. So let's have, a, let's have courage to deal with that our all uh, knowledge is being processed through software technology digital technology and we are applying the method into the software technology and then we are coming out with somebody would say that i'm not interested in software industry i'm not going to go into the tcs or like that so this is not like that even if you are working on to this uh, like uh, projects like uh, uh, godrej infrastructure or adani infrastructure or say Saporji, Palhonji, then they also use nowadays different other softwares uh, for project management. So it is not about that you need to work only on software, but this is the demand of time that we should be digitally powerful. So I, uh, I assume that you understood this uh, need of the time and would work ac accordingly. Okay, uh, this is next slide. Visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, here, what we have we discussed is uh, mentioned as functions uh, of uh, of uh, GIS. That how, what the GIS could do. Earlier, we have seen components. So there may be question in university exam uh, or sometime in internal evaluation, we also ask that what are the different components of GIS? So you could see those five spheres, five domains where you are capturing data, you are taking it to software, hardware, and then applying your methods and processing and finally output, it, output is being taken. And similarly, the functions are also in that manner that what we are doing here is the data capture data capture here or input of data both are almost similar in some way data capturing is also possible in gis that directly we are using instruments to capture the data which will become input into the gis for processing so you keep your mind open that data capturing is also possible sometimes gis also behave as an instrument otherwise gis is a tool mostly most of the time gis acts as a tool that we use it use it a tool we input and take output 
but sometimes it acts as instrument also like capturing for data capturing uh, so data capturing is possible in in at many levels that directly data capture so you understand that data capture less data input the first function the data compilation the special and attribute data earlier i have given you the kind of uh, uh, segregation of spatial and attribute attribute word is new to you so attribute data is like uh, uh, something some information about something like uh, say uh, there are electric poles you are uh, elect electric poles you are just uh, creating map that how many electric poles are there in the amdabad city and then he, you are numbering each and every electric pole on the map of the amdabad so number of the electric pole is attribute data and their location on the map is spatial uh, data i think this will make uh, things more clear if you write the height of the height of the electric pole then that will that is also a that is also an attribute data so location wise when it is in the space something you mention which you mention on the map then it is spatial and information about that object on the map is attribute data you can also write that uh, that electric pole is whether it's a metallic or a rcc pole so that data is also attribute data okay so data compilation of both type spatial and attribute data and data storage data storage uh, is very interesting and is uh, like very important uh, function of gis Uh, data storage there are two types of data model in uh, gis one is raster and sec second is vector o above here data compilation i have given you this is data spatial data and attribute data this is data about the object now these are data models of storage this is data compile spatial data and attribute data this is data about object on the map on the earth surface objects are there so this is data about the objects get this confusion of you just now because this gis data models and object data spatial and attribute data many times we get confused with that what we had learned we could not reproduce in the examination or while handling the gis application so unless until we work upon some of the data before that uh, the, let, let's get it this data is spatial data and attribute data here data storage data storage is done through two models data storage models this is gis data models or you could say data storage models okay so they are raster data and vector data and raster data and vector data are very important and uh, there is a 10 to 15% weightage given in the university exam so take it that way that we'll understand what the raster data and what the vector data is there is one complete uh, there would be a complete uh, uh, lecture from my side on to vector and was, uh, raster data models this is just the introductory kind of things i'm giving you and uh, then we'll have the separate lectures on this. if you are not getting just now don't take headache the things would be more clearer in the further lectures the the fourth function is data manipulation manipulation we uh, manipulation word a term when we use in our day to day life then everybody say he is a manipulative person manipulator so that is a bad term this is like a cheater kind of thing a person is if somebody cheats then we use the second term for him or her like manu she manipulates or he manipulates so data manipulation is in gis is a very strong feature very strong feature is not a bad thing data manipulation is a very strong feature and it's a very strong function of gis what is data manipulation suppose we do not need the uh, data of electric poles of amdabad in on the map of uh, um, the map of uh, amdabad the city then that data can be manipulated that exclude this data 
and rest of the data would remain or otherwise if we need only the electric number of electric poles on the uh, on this map of Ahmedabad city then we show only that much uh, this is very simple uh, example of manipulation there could be more complicated uh, uh, examples of uh, this uh, manipulation data manipulation say number of uh, uh, multi stories in the Ahmedabad city so multi stories so rest of the houses would be uh, would not be on to the screen would not be on the table data table so this manipulation uh, this manipulation word here in gis you term as a, a expert uh, you could understand this manipulation as a, a kind of expert process through which we uh, display the required items onto the screen so that is what is the manipulation in gis it's not a bad thing so data data manipulation is a strength and it's a big pillar it's a big function of gis data analysis and visualization so manipulation beyond the manipulation we could also analyze the data through certain statistical method in the gis you would be very happy to know that all the gis even qgis which you are going to learn the qgis they are all uh, uh, very much strong in the statistical method which statistical method like calculating the average the uh, mean mode median and uh, like uh, many other statistical standard deviation kind of thing and many other statistical uh, processes can be done within the gis the data you entered we can do the analysis on that and after that what we get is the output product and we could visualize very beautiful map appears on the, onto the screen so gis basically deal with the spatial mm, variation so visualization would also be very beautiful when we are looking at the final product of the gis so functions here are interesting earlier we have seen the domains or system components these are the functions and uh, we have also seen a kind of difference between the object data and data storage models so you should uh, be comfortable in uh, distinguishing these uh, different things i will take one more slide and then we'll conclude the lecture ha to ye aap dekhiye ye jo grid hai ye 1 2 3 4 aur 5 aur 6 6 yahan pe squares hain chote aur yahan is idhar bhi 6 hai so ye itna area this much area been input into the gis okay this much so ye area this is the extent of the layer this is one layer i consider in which this is a pixel this is a size of pixel say ye ho sakta hai aapka size ki 100 meter ka ho idhar ek ek so 100 600 meter ka idhar hai aur 600 meter ka is side hai to ye 600 meter by 600 meter ka पूरा का पूरा ग्रिड बना हुआ है एंड हर एक जो है ये छोटा स्क्वायर है वो 100 मीटर बाय 100 मीटर का हो गया 100 बाय 100 सो दिस इज कॉल्ड अ सेल आर यू गेटिंग दिस इज कॉल्ड अ सेल सो देयर आर हाउ मेनी सेल्स 36 सेल्स इन दिस लेयर दिस इज वन लेयर दिस इज वन मैप दिस इज वन मैप एंड हुज dimensions are say 600 meter by 600 600 meter and each this cell is 100 by 100 meter so there are 36 cells so you could act accordingly calculate the things and each and every cell is geo referenced i said that data which whichever data even nodes of this grid these interjunctions of this grid are geo referenced you could have exact uh, the longitude and latitude of these uh, these points exact we need geo referenced this map so this is one layer and this is a cell 100 by 100 so the this is called spatial resolution of the layer are you getting this is called 100 meter is spatial re resolution if we divide this 600 meter length and 600 meter breadth of this piece of land into say more cells so instead of six i divide into say 60 so in that case our special spatial resolution will 
come to 10 now it is 100 meter by 100 meter in that case if we divide into 60 then each cell would be 10 meter by 10 meter so our spatial resolution has been increased not decreased if the spatial resolution is 100 by 100 means one cell data in one cell is being depicted as one thing and if i divide this into say 10 more say this 100 by 100 is divided into 10 so there would be 10 into 10 more 100 cells and each cell is holding different information so what is the importance of cell that a one cell here store one information one set one type of information only so it's a difficult in remote sensing this is called spatial resolution here also this is resolution of the grid so very interesting here to understand that when you you increase the resolution of the grid the information becomes more and more brighter like when we take the digital image photograph photograph of a person so usko jaise zoom in karte hain zyada to wo phat jati hai iska matlab hua uska resolution acha nahi hai poor resolution hai yadi wo image aapki photograph yadi aapki phatti nahi hai khulti jati hai khulti jati hai to kya hoga ki uska resolution acha hai lekin itna acha resolution hone ke liye aapki single ek passport photo ka ek mb jitna data consume kar leta hai ya usse zyada 2 mb 10 mb data hota hai lekin itna data hame Stored kitni sari image is me jayegi, so itana data ham nika sakte store. So, data storage was big problem. It was a big problem earlier. Now it is still, it is we are not comfortable in data storage. But things are becoming more and more um, comfortable. We are becoming more uh, like uh, going for high resolution uh, pictures. So, let's come back to GIS data layers and integration so that I could finish this slide. So this is uh, one layer. What is this? This is street data. This is street data. The second is this is second layer. This is second layer. This is third layer and third layer is what vegetation data vegetation. Fourth layer is what integrated integrated means this combinedly all three the street information building information and vegetation information has been taken to this. So what integration is done here that in GIS it is possible we could handle different things differently. So this is called a thematic map. So what is GIS? GIS is basically a higher order uh, maps. GIS information, GIS is called a science or technology of making higher order maps. So this is higher order map. We, what could we do? We are creating street data map, street this, these are the streets of say some part of the Ahmedabad and the, this is second street. These are few buildings of the say uh, Ahmedabad area and this is uh, the vegetation of that same part in the Ahmedabad area. So they represent the same area, same piece of land in the Ahmedabad city, but we are having three layers. One is for the street, second is for the building, third is for the vegetation. Now we in GIS, we can see them, visualize them separately and we could combine them all together. In that case, we'll have all three integrated into one map. So this kind of thing can be generated. This is whole map. What we see generally in terms of paper map, analog map like this and while separating, we can't do this onto the paper map. So digital maps facilitate us in separating all the information. Now, if we are doing say road work, road, road network in Ahmedabad, we use only the street data. We are not interested in this, that where the buildings are, where the vegetation is. So what we do, we process this much only. So this digital information would be processed. If we are interested in tax collection or say property tax collection, then we'll have this layer only. If we are interested in and understanding that how much vegetation cover is there and how many more trees we should grow, then we'll go with this layer and if we are interested in generating a complete map of the area then we'll use all the information we'll integrate and we'll generate this kind of map now this map is one thing map is generated is one thing these are the layers one theme here is the street second theme is the building fourth third theme is the vegetation and fourth is the integrated map 
and this is thematic map this is thematic map this is thematic map and this is integrated map so this in information is partial this is spatial and visual information and the data about this street or these buildings is also there that is attribute data this is spatial uh, features and th these all features all objects on the surface are geo reference wherever you take this map this house this hut would appear exactly at that location only but we are not understanding that this this particular house belongs to whom then if we click this image on gis application say in qgis then this will show us the information about this house that who is the owner how many rooms are there and how much taxes he really pay annually or how much water this house consumes so that information would be available in a tabular format so all information even these trees information about which trees this how old is the tree where is the grass area where is the open park everything can be drawn here and that information regarding all these can be kept separately in tabular format so database here is the spatial database about the objects and in tabular attribute database would be there okay so this is data layers and its integration in gis this is very important